going on YouTube Nation this is Dark Dividend if you guys are new to my YouTube channel make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos so as you know I've been throwing about $500 a week into my M1 finance dividend portfolio so being a travel nurse with my pay it's very nice plus I'm paying for my semester which is pretty nice as well in cash but these are five dividend stocks I found that are cheap and Again, I see them very undervalued. Again, this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes only. Disclaimer in the description. And I'm trying to get my Starbucks coffee to kick in for me before I start my clinical rotation today. So I like the way things are looking with these guys. They are cheap. They have pretty good dividend growth, and they're in demand. So let's check these stocks out right now. That first dividend stock is Pfizer, sitting at $43.98, a dividend yield of 3.73%, a PE ratio of 8.04, average volume $23.35 million. The market cap is $246.87 billion U.S. dollars. Year range is 41.45 to 56.32. Its day range is 43.53 to 44.10. Its previous close is 43.59. So these guys have so many products in the hospital. And they also have medications for people to help their blood pressure. They also have medications for people with anxiety. And mental health, unfortunately, is on the rise. Hypertension is on the rise. Diabetes is on the rise. The rise of stroke is around the rise. Everything healthcare related is high in demand. And these guys have products out there. They have strong antibiotics as well in the hospital. So I can tell you there's a lot of Pfizer logos out there. Companies that like is like a subsidiary to Pfizer, you see right there in the hospital. So they they are so in demand. And it's not just Paxlovid, something to counter COVID-19, which is an antiviral medication, or the Pfizer vaccine, which they are a um, little bit of controversy with Project Veritas that came out recently. And that was very disturbing. But, you know, these guys pretty much rule the world. They pay, you know... People who are high up in Congress, and they do what they want, and it's unfortunate. So let's go over their revenue and dividend history. This is why I see these guys as undervalued. Look at their revenue. This is in millions of U.S. dollars. 2016, 52,284. 2017, 52,546. 2018, 40,825. 2019, 40,905. 2020, 41,651. 2021, 81,288. Then 2022, 100,000. This is in millions U.S. dollars. This is probably profiting from the vaccine and or Paxlovid because they're such in demand right now. Now I'm going to jump to their dividend history. Right here, I'm just going to start in 2021 with their dividend growth. It's not like amazing, but it has a steady dividend growth. So it starts at 39 cents in 2021, 2022, 40 cents, and then 2023, 41 cents. So the payout ratio is extremely low, according to Zacks, at 24%. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. Dividend growth in five years is 3.98%. So if you bought one share, you made 164 with a 3.73% dividend yield. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. Next dividend stock I find very interesting is Intel Corporation. And I really think it has to do with the microchip competition and the microchip arms race pretty much between the superpowers. The United States is trying to compete with other countries and the scary thing is what happens if taiwan gets invaded have a problem so guess what we need to start making our own stuff in america and they're going to be doing this in columbus eventually they're sitting at 28.24 dividend yield of 5.17 percent a p.e ratio of 14.53 average volume 43.27 million the market cap is 116.83 billion u.s dollars year range is 24.59 to 54.09 Day range is 2821 to 2912, and its previous close is 2905. So I'll jump to their revenue and dividend history. The revenue is a little bit down. This is in millions of US dollars 2016, 59,000, 2017, 62,000, 2018, 70,000, 2019, 71,000, 2020, 77,000, then 2021, 79,000, then 2022, 63,000. So there's a slight decrease you can blame 
you know, a few things going on, but guess what? They made money during the pandemic, which is attractive, and they do have an increase in revenue from 2016 to 2022, and they are competing in the arms race. Now let's jump to their dividend history. Let's start in 2016. It was 26 cents, 2017, 27 cents, 2018, 30 cents, 2019, 32 cents, 2020, 33 cents, 2021, 35 cents, 2022, 37 cents. They're stagnant at 37 cents. They do have a little bit of a high payout ratio. I'm not too concerned. Number of dividend increases the last five years is four. Dividend growth in five years is 4.83 cent. If you bought one share, you made 146 with a 5.17% dividend yield. That's not too bad. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. Next one I'm going to go with Vitreous. It's sitting at 11.92, a dividend yield of 4.03%, a PE ratio of 18.07, average volume 9.17 million, the market cap is 14.46 billion US dollars. Year range is 8.42 to 15.60, its day range is 11.90 to 12.10, its previous close was 12.11. So what do I like about these guys? They have some very important medications that are out there. I know I did a review on these guys, but I'm going to go a little bit, again, with some information regarding these guys. So here's Lipitor. So here's the thing with Lipitor. If somebody has a heart attack, somebody has diabetes, somebody has um, high cholesterol, or if they get a stroke, pretty much they're usually put on a statin. And it's part of our core measures in healthcare. If you get a heart attack or a stroke, you're put on a statin. Now, a lot of research out there, people that are diabetics, they're put on a statin. Norvask is a calcium channel blocker. Actually works very well for African Americans. The research has been out there, and it's been fantastic. Gabapentin, people, there's a rise in diabetes. Guess what? There's a rise in diabetic neuropathy. This is a medication that people take. Lyrica is another one. If gabapentin doesn't work, they take Lyrica, which is for neuropathy. Sometimes people take gabapentin as a sleep aid as well. Xanax, anti-anxiety. People take that to go to sleep. People take that all the time. Viagra, I don't need to go into that. Geodon, that's one of our weapons of choice. When a uh, dementia patient in the hospital goes crazy, we, do, we give them a nice dose of Geodon. That usually helps. Freon, these things right here, digestive medications. So people that have digestive issues, they take this. And this has enzymes in there to help people um, digest stuff. So I just want to go over there. Effexor, both moods. I don't want to get into that. Um, so there's some pretty good medications out there. And nitrostat, obviously, if you're having chest pain, you take nitro uh, sublingual under your tongue. So a lot of people are discharged with that in the hospital. A lot of people have that if they have a history of chest pain. And Celebrex, I'm not going to go into detail with that. I'm sure you know what that is. Um, if you have any questions, just make a comment and I'll tell you what it's about. Let's go the, over their revenue and dividend history. I'm going to focus really on 2021. This is in millions US dollars. This is a lot of money, 17,886. So I know there's a little bit of controversy with these guys, but with their revenue jumping and being strong, I like the way things are going. I like the way things are going with these guys. I know they're kind of a new kid on the block, but I'm going to focus on recent revenue. So this is in millions US dollars, 17,886. Now let's go over their most recently state uh, or most recent statement. So right here, the revenue in December 2021 was 4.34 billion. March was 4.19 million. This is quarterly. Again, this is in billions. Revenue was 4.12 billion in June 2022, and September was 4.08 billion. So sure, it went down 10.1%. But I'm seeing the four billion mark right there. The net profit margin has been pretty strong with these guys. I know these guys are kind of new with the operating income and all that, but the net income is up. The net profit margin has been up in the last statement, September 2022, which excites me. Now let's go over their dividend history. So here's their revenue. Uh, this is kind of, they're a new kid on the block. I mean, I'm trying to be as basic as possible. 2021, they were 11 cents, and then 2022, they were 12 cents. So you can't really see a dividend growth in five years, but I like the way things are going with their revenue. Let's jump to the next dividend stock. I just posted a video on these guys, Huntington Bank shares are sitting at 1544. If you keep an eye on my shorts, and I, like I said, keep an eye on my shorts, I'm trying to post at least one to two shorts a day, as well as post longer videos for you guys like this. Dividend yield of 4.02%, a PE ratio of 10.64, average volume 14.11 million, 
Market cap, $22.28 billion U.S. dollars. Its year range is 1167 to 1651. Day range is 1539 to 1559. Its previous close is 1557. So look at this drop. These guys are still trying to recover, and they're sitting at 1544. So I'll jump to their revenue and dividend history. So here's their revenue. I did post this on my shorts. So keep an eye on my shorts. I'm posting a lot of videos for you guys. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're new. 2016, 3,782. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. 2017, 4,740. 2018, 5,270. 2019, 5,655. 2020, 5,238. 2021, 6,080. Then 2022, 7,950. Let's go over their dividend history. Let's start in 2013, it was five cents. 2015, it was six cents to seven cents. 2017, it was eight cents. 2018, it's 11 cents. 2019, it's 14 cents, 15 cents. 2022, it's 16 cents right now. So the payout ratio is 41%. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is three. Dividend growth in five years is 5.23%. If you bought one share, you made 62 cents with a 4.02% dividend yield. This is one I'm considering and highly considering getting to 200 to 400 shares let's jump to the final dividend stock and this is another bank stock that is i've done numerous videos on these guys so keep an eye on that if with my um previous videos and I, if you want me to go into detail i'll do that again key corp it's sitting at 1980 this is a bank stock uh the financial sector stock dividend yield of 4.14 percent pe ratio of 10.30 Average volume, $11.89 million. The market cap is $18.48 billion U.S. dollars. Year range is 1526 to 2710. Day range was 1970 to 20. And its previous close is 2002. So I'll do their revenue and dividend history. Look at their revenue. This is in millions U.S. dollars. 2016, 5390 2017, 6868 2018, 7393 2019, 7694 2020, 7337 2021. 7,561, 2022, 8,130. So let's jump to their dividend history. Check this out. This is why I'm loading up with these guys, and this is why I'm highly considering 200 to 400 shares. 2017, 9 cents, 2 10 cents, 2 11 cents, 2018, 12 cents, 2018, 17 cents, 2019, 19 cents, 2021, 20 cents, and then 2023 and 2022, 21 cents. So payout ratio is 43%. Number of dividend increases in the last five years is five. Dividend growth in five years is 8.48%. If you bought one share, you made 82 cents with a 4.14% dividend yield. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new to this channel. These videos are free for you. I reveal to you all my dividend investing strategies. I reveal to you what I buy, and I provide my rationales as to why I buy certain dividend stocks. You got to hit that notification bell after you subscribe. And don't forget, I review a lot of dividend stocks as well. And as you know, this is not financial advice for entertainment purposes. Only disclaimer in the description. You guys take care and have a great Thursday.